I'm back again with another episode of Healing Holden. Sorry, it's been about ooh, seven months since I've uh, spoken to you guys last, and um, I've been a little busy getting remarried and <laughs> stuff. So that was a whirlwind. Um, so I just wanted to get in touch with you guys again to let you know uh, something I, I read in a magazine recently that I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to, to let you guys know about this. So um, there's a really good magazine called um, What Doctors Don't Tell You. And um, what I love about it, uh, this one in particular was How I Beat Alzheimer's. Um, the simple gift that gave one man back his brain. So uh, I, I'm not sure if I've said before, I think I did in one of my previous videos that I call autism um, baby Alzheimer's because it really did seem like that's what had happened to my son, the whole regression um, and even a little bit like a stroke victim where you know, there were certain things that he had learned to do that he'd forgotten how to do and still to this day can't do, uh, something as simple as blowing his nose. He learned early on and now... He doesn't know how to do it anymore. So um, not too cool, but we're recovering him and he's actually been in school and um, doing really, really well. Um, I'm ready to mainstream him. His dad isn't. Um, I'm actually a little bit sad because um, some of uh, his, his, his father got control of him because I was supporting the family um, and he lied through his teeth in court. And had a lawyer in his family who also is uh, suspected of being a serial killer, Catherine Mahaffey Shelton. Look her up. It's very interesting. It's, a, it's actually been an interesting uh, study for me in, in um, mental disorders uh, because I believe his older sister um, had the book, uh, Hate You, Don't Leave Me, um, and she, uh, you know, which, which is a book on bipolar. And, uh, not bipolar, I'm sorry, borderline. So um, all of these things, in my mind, um, you know, you, you do definitely have a little bit of nature and a little bit of nurture and these things because I know I saw my little boy turn in uh, to the devil spawn after he'd been just an angel. And it was all because he had these um, toxins hitting his brain. If you think about, you know, things like... Um, uh, Phineas Gage, where uh, the guy was a, an upstanding uh, foreman for the railroad, and um, he got a railroad spike you know, straight through his, I think, through his cheek and the back of his head, and it killed basically his frontal lobe, and he suddenly became you know, like this guy that nobody wanted to be around, couldn't keep a job, was, you know, uh, cursing and drinking, and just really turned horrible. And that is what it seems like has happened, is that you know, something in the brain has been damaged and now um, they're having to rewire around it, these, you know, at least with my child. And uh, he can go in and out of these phases. And, and recently, um, I, a couple of people have identified him, you know, just strangers, you know, random strangers and asking me if, if my son is bipolar, um, which, you know, I do, I do believe his father is. Um, so, you know, it wasn't until recently that I really understood it and that uh, he'd answered a few questions um, affirm affirmatively about that. Um, but it, it led me to believe that this is the kind of thing that can help in those situations. And when I worked for Dr. Peter Osborne, we were re reversing uh, things like bipolar and schizophrenia because they were coming from really metal toxicity and uh, yeast. And if you look, like Huffington Post has something about yeast overgrowth causing um, bipolar and schizophrenia and even things like uh, major uh, gout uh, episodes can trigger a, a manic episode, which I think happened in my case that I'm eyewitness to. So not, not for me, I have ADHD, so I have the things that go along with that. Obviously, with the, my videos, you can probably see the scatterbrainness and the you know, disorganization that's involved with that, a lack of um, time <laughs> consciousness, whereas you know, my autistic son seems very um, time-oriented. And um, anyway, so all of this stuff, um, I think Alzheimer's, you know, autism, uh, bipolar, um, 
Yes, I think there, there's a hereditary factor, but I think the hereditary factor isn't necessarily genetics. Uh, can be like maybe a methylation issue, like you don't have the proper enzymes to cleave gluten. You know, that's just a gluten sensitivity. Just don't eat gluten. Just like some people, you know, they, they aren't capable of processing coffee and some people aren't capable of processing alcohol very easily. And um, I think you just work with your body instead of, you know, and, and that's why vaccines are so dangerous. Uh, because what you're doing is giving a cookie cutter to everyone and there's no one size for this all. So I'm repeating myself. Um, let's move on to this article. Um, this is talking about silica. And I know in the chelation um, video I've done before, we talked about how cilantro was the only thing that crossed the blood brain barrier to be able to remove aluminum, which is what my son has is aluminum poisoning. And this guy, uh, he was 53 years old and was, uh, you know, becoming uh, you know, an Alzheimer's, uh, basically Alzheimer's was, was happening to him. And um, he actually says this, we basically, we're in an age of aluminum and um, he found what's called the water solution. And this is what he says. Let me read it to you. Um, Exley's team, which is this doctor that they mentioned, um, you know, earlier on in the in the article, has been working for decades on how to remove toxic aluminum from the body once it gets in. In his studies with aluminum intoxicated salmon, more than 25 years ago, Exley had a eureka moment when he discovered that the mineral silica in water bound to toxic aluminum and removed it from poison fish, which then recovered. Since then, Exley has demonstrated that drinking 1.5 liters about 50 fluid ounces of mineral water high in aqueous silica continent. Oh my God, sorry, aqueous water silica content such as vulvic. Um, I don't know if you've seen that before. It's the glass uh, bottled water that's common with a nice little silver top. It's pretty big. It's like, you know, yay large. Um, or Fiji water. An hour before 30 minutes workouts increase aluminum. I'm sick, guys. I'm sorry. My, my brain's kind of out of it. Um, aluminum excretion and sweat up to tenfold and drinking just one liter of silica rich mineral water or 34 fluid ounces increased aluminum excretion in the urine of Alzheimer's patients. What's more, after just three months of doing this, three of 15 patients showed cognitive improvements. So I was really excited about this because um, one of my husband's aunts, uh, uh, she uh, started purchasing Fiji water water for for herself a long time ago. And when you know I mentioned, oh oh, here we go, um, Fiji to her, I'll call it back. Um, she started buying it for Holden. So. Um, it did seem to help. Um, I haven't had been able to really get him to do this in particular, you know, drink it and then sweat. Um, but he's constantly moving around. So, you know, he's a little boy that doesn't sweat very much, kind of like me. Um, so that is one of the things that I was working on with him. And I haven't tested those things. I haven't seen it, but it's good information for you to know. Um, and then going ketogenic, you know, um, the medium chain fatty acids contained in coconut oil. Uh, this guy was talking about um, a little concoction with turmeric and coconut oil that he would have every day, and this was to decrease inflammation in the brain. So um, he says, essentially, uh, one heaping teaspoon of extra virgin coconut oil, one heaping teaspoon of ground turmeric combined in a cup uh, with boiling water, um, he cools it with some milk and then black pepper. Um, and he suggests maybe a dash of cinnamon, a ground ginger, half a teaspoon of cacao or honey might be more palatable. Um, and, but he really swears by this, um, uh, Volvic or Fiji and even like an infrared sauna or, you know, if you can't get the child to sweat by exercising. Um, if you have access to an infrared sauna, then by all means do that. I mean, that's as well documented in detoxification. Uh, so sources of toxic aluminum, this is also something that you want to do. Stop adding aluminum to 
your child um, or you don't cook with aluminum because anything um, acidic uh, like I don't I use a paper filter for my coffee because there's a little metal filter but if you don't let the acids touch the metal in the coffee filter the coffee will go through um, not picking up the the metal and putting it into your drink so you don't want to add it even if it's oral um, and the same thing will happen the uh, if you have tomato on aluminum or lemon or whatever that's acidic it'll pick up the aluminum and and synthesize it into your food um, watch your medicines medicines contain aluminum these days uh, especially antacids uh, buh, 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 buh. heartburn drugs like proton inhibitors so <laughs> a lot of um, elderly people and a lot of autistic kids are on um, some, you know, because they happen to have a lot of reflex, uh, sorry, acid reflux, they will give them, you know, things like, what's the proton, what's the purple pill, Nexium, and that has a lot of aluminum in it. So guys, if you can do something else, like I noticed um, with my reflux and my ex's reflux um, and my mother's uh, probiotics and um, having a low glycemic diet, or essentially kind of like a zone diet. I did the zone diet for a while. It was real popular back in the day. Jennifer Aniston was on it. And it's basically just, I call it my Bible diet. So it's just not too many, oh, there goes my lamp. There goes my light. Not too much uh, uh, carbs per protein. So everything kind of in a balance. So your plate has uh, about 30% of your calories are from fat, 30% from protein and about 40 from carbs and that has to do with anything that you put in your mouth just so that your blood sugar levels don't raise and then it doesn't tip off your hormones and then just kind of cause a cascade of of hormonal issues um buffered aspirin has it vaccines um, aluminum is now replaced um, has replaced mercury in uh, childhood vaccines however some uh, things like the flu shot still contain mercury as well as aluminum which is really, really bad together. Um, allergy shots. So there's a lot of kids who are um, allergic, uh, who are autistic and getting allergy shots. Any kind of injection will have some kind of metal in it. So I would highly suggest even B12 shots, find a different route, either a transdermal or an under the tongue or whatever it is that you can find that isn't um, an injection would be far preferable to um, an injection. Um, it's in your pantry. It's in baking powders. Uh, let's see, antiperspirants, uh, cosmetics. That's a big one. So make sure like your lotions and stuff. And there are nanoparticles um, in in cosmetics. So they really absorb really well. So that's that was all of this you know, sources of aluminum in in this particular magazine. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, uh, so I just wanted to make that video for you guys. Um, great magazine if you can pick it up. Um, and uh, and really, you know, what we're talking about with mental illness, uh, including autism, ADHD. I mean, I'm not taking myself off the hook here, guys, because I know, you know, uh, there's a Feingold diet. Oh, I don't remember if I've mentioned it before, but if you can look up the Feingold diet, um, it's something that I kind of put myself on and my son on because uh, it's something very common with ADHD. Uh, it has to do with salicylates and phenols and food coloring and the basic tenet that you're low in sulfates. Um, so if you eat anything that makes your body require sulfates to process it out you know, without harming the body, then you're going to not be able to carry out body processes that the uh, sulfates required for like thinking so I think I did bring it up um, before so uh, you know I've had episodes where I ate the wrong thing or, or a bunch of the wrong things containing salicylates grapes cucumbers peppers um, tomatoes potatoes and I kind of had a meltdown for no reason um, so those are the kinds of things that you know, now that I can identify them um, I shore up within myself. I'm taking my probiotics. I'm I'm doing my best, and and that's all you can do. And when you see somebody who is suffering from um, mental illness, you're dealing with someone who may not be aware of what it is that's triggering that. So um, be gentle with them. 
Um, I can't claim that I uh, was, um, but I tried <laughs> with my ex. Um, and, and then there are some people that just don't want to see it. I know my, my son is still kind of denying a lot of things. So um, you need all the help that you can get. And this really is something that's um, tenable. It, it's something that, that you can fix and something that you can help, you know, talk therapy is great. You know, ABA is great. You know, all these outside, um, helpers are great. And, and I'm not saying anything that, that they aren't helpful. And even if you need a little bit of med medication to put a bandaid on the problem until you can figure yourself out, that's fine. But, um, recognize that those are not the root cause and that a lot of these other things need to be taken care of in order to not need that bandaid anymore. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like it, um, subscribe for more. Uh, I have another one on, uh, again, back to healing the gut. This magazine also had a great article on lectins, so I need to do a little research before I really um, piece it together and put it out for you. Um, and uh, share with people that you think might benefit from it. Thanks so much and have a great day.